This is tutorial 1, case problem 2. We begin by opening a file called Haley Foods. You'll find that in the Excel 1 Case 2 folder. And then we immediately do a file Save As, and save it in the same folder it came from, and call it Haley Foods, and click Save. In step 2, they ask us to rename Sheet 1 and call it Balance Sheet. So you type on the Sheet tab, and then be sure to press Enter when you're finished. In step 2, we also are asked to delete Sheets 2 and 3. You can right-click on a sheet and choose Delete, right-click, Delete. In step 3, we're asked to insert two blank lines at the top of the spreadsheet. So to do that, we'll highlight the 1 and the 2, right-click, choose Insert, and that inserts two lines for us. Next, we're asked to type some text, Haley Foods, but to have multiple lines of text within the same cell, all in A1. So if you press Alt-Enter as you're typing, that will move you to the next line, but you'll still be in cell A1. So let me go ahead and finish that. Now when I press Enter, you'll see that it wraps down the column because the column is not wide enough to accommodate it. That doesn't look very good. Um, actually, in a later step, they ask us to change the column width of A to 30 characters. I'll go ahead and do that now. If you put your cursor between the A and the B right on that line, you can slide it over to somewhere around 30. Don't worry about getting it exact. And while we're here, let's go ahead and make column B 20 characters wide and column C is 26 characters wide. And again, just get close. All right, now we can see a lot better, but that shows us how high the row height is here. It's much too high. So we're going to do an auto fit for this. And you do that by putting your cursor on the line between the one and the two in your row headings and double click. And that does a best fit. Now we're asked to enter some numbers starting here in cell D5. And so we're going to enter some numbers. 806 goes here. And then if we press Enter, we move down. And that's 1194. And I'm going to stop the video and go ahead and get these typed in. And so you can do the same. You'll find the information on page 52 of your textbook. Go ahead and get it typed in and then come back to the video. I now have all the numbers typed in as indicated. And I'm on step 6. They want me to use AutoSum to calculate the total current assets. So that's this row here, row 11. We'll start with our cursor in D11. We'll click the AutoSum button. We'll check to make sure it's highlighting the correct range. If it is, we click it again. And then you can use your fill handle to fill that to the right. Same thing would happen here. Double click the AutoSum button. Use your fill handle. Fill to the right. And you can take a shortcut if you want. You can just highlight where you need all the totals and then just click the Auto Sum button. It will do all three at the same time. So now we have, um, we need to have our total preferred stock, retain earnings, etc. So we'll do the same thing there. I'm going to select the range first, hit my Auto Sum button. And I've gone ahead and I've typed the formula here, but I want, actually I'm going to erase it. And we're going to do our total liabilities and shareholders equity. So this is a formula. We'll start with equal. We want our total current liabilities plus our minority interest plus we want our total shareholders equity. And so that should turn out to be 14582 And it looks like I left something out. So I'm going to go back up here. Yes, indeed. I needed to total all of my assets. We have current assets and other assets. So we're going to write a formula in row 19 to add up our total current assets, D11, plus D17, or our other assets, and then that gives us our total assets. I use my fill handle to fill across. And one thing that's important to know is when you do a balance sheet like this, it should balance. So this number and this number have to be the same. And likewise, of course, this number and this number have to be the same, and those two. So that tells us that we're in balance. This is a good time to save your file. In step nine, they ask us to use the spell checker to look for any spelling mistakes. I like to put my cursor in the upper left-hand corner before I run the spell checker. 
So I'll go to my Review tab, I'll click my Spelling button, which is also F7, and I see the first word, Inventories, is misspelled. It has two T's and it shouldn't. And so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and change that. Payable is misspelled. I'll change that. Payroll is misspelled. I'll change that. Equity is misspelled, or is it? Yes, yeah, a G in there. I'll change that. And then it says you want to continue checking at the beginning, just in case you hadn't started at the top. So we click OK, and it looks like everything is OK now. Moving to step 10, they want to change the zoom level of the balance sheet to 70% normal view, so you can see the entire content. So I'll do that. I'll reduce my zoom down to around 70. It's really hard to see in a video, but you can get an idea of what the overall appearance of this worksheet is. In step 12, and I'm going to go back to a larger zoom just to make it easier for you to see. In step 12, they want us to insert a new sheet. Now you can click, there will be a sheet tab for you if you're in 2010, the new worksheet. This is 2013, so we click the plus. We're going to name that sheet Documentation. I like to slide the Documentation sheet by, by dragging its sheet tab to the left. And then we're going to fill that in with the name of the company, Haley Foods. And then the author, date, and purpose. And of course, you'll go ahead and fill that in with your name, today's date. And the textbook gives you a nice little description of the purpose of this spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and save our file again. And now we want to preview and print the entire workbook. So let's go to File. Let's go to Print. And right now, I'm only seeing page one. I'm just seeing my documentation sheet. But right here in this button, I can change it to Print Entire Workbook. Now when I cursor to the right, I can see, shoot, that there's three pages. And oh, look what's happening. That doesn't look very good, does it? We don't want to have just this on the third page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some scaling to scale that down. I can do that from right here. There is a scaling button. Right now it's set not to scale. But if I choose fit on one page, that should bring me down to two pages. The documentation would be one. And then the entire spreadsheet will print on the other one. So you can go ahead and you can print that. Now they tell us to print in the formula view. Let's go back into our document. If you press Control tilde, that toggles you into what's called a formula view. And in the formula view, you actually see the formulas rather than what they, the results of the formulas. And that's a good thing to print just for um, our, our records. So again, I'm going to go to File Print. This time it will have widened the columns and I'm not sure it's going to fit on two pages. Well, it does. It did do that because I've got that fit on one page. But it's so small, I doubt you could read it. So l let's change that to no scaling. Now that turns out to be five pages. Well, I don't like that either. So let's go back in. Or, or let's go to our Page Layout tab. And in here we have scaling. I'm going to take this down to 80%. Because I think with 80% I can get it all on two pages. So let's try that. Let's go to File, Print. And this time we won't print the whole workbook. We'll just print the active sheet. And yes, I now have it down to just two sheets. If we look at page two, you can see the formulas and it's large enough to read. So that's good to go. Let's go ahead and print that. And then we will return to our spreadsheet, pressure Control tilde to toggle back out of the formula view 